Good evening. So it's like we had some sessions in the morning, another one in the afternoon, and now it's in the evening. We thank God for bringing us. May God's name be praised in Jesus' name. We're going to do two sessions before break this time around. So we thank God. Now I can do podcasts without anybody telling me you can't talk in the night. So now I can talk in the night. So as long as possible, I can continue on and on till I complete it. So we thank God for this grace and this progress. May God's name be praised in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you. We appreciate you for a time like this. Be magnified in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have been speaking to us about. Please accept our praises and our thanks in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for this progress. I thank you. Anytime I come for podcasts like this, I don't feel uh, that there are things I need to do that I'm not doing. I feel fulfilled. Father, I'm grateful for this. Thank you, Lord. You are the Lord that employed me. <laughs> I was searching for a job and God employed me. Thank you, Jesus. God, I bless your name. I appreciate you. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have been speaking through me on this channel or on this podcast page. Father, I'm so grateful. Thank you, Lord, for how you have been taking control, taking charge of each and every message and everything. Oh, God, we bless your name. Oh, God, we appreciate you. Blessed be the name of our God in Jesus' name. Father, as we now come before you, King of glory, please put your words in my mouth. Speak through me. Speak to our souls. Father, fill me with the Holy Spirit and refill me in the name of Jesus. Almighty Father, please have your way in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, please take control. Take charge in the name of Jesus. Father, open our hearts. Open our understanding. Open our ears. Give us wisdom to understand in the name of Jesus. Father, let the power of God flow through me into everyone's soul to speak the rightful things because we are the Lord that knows each and every person how they are. I might be saying one thing, but because He's not the Holy Spirit that is going through that message into people that it may not it may not be what they really want to hear. But by the time the Holy Spirit flows through me and flow through the message. It should just be interpreting in the rightful part of that of each person's heart that they actually need God to speak to them. Father, we want these messages, not just this one alone. We want these messages to be like that, to be speaking to people in that part of their heart that they need God to speak in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for answer prayers. Thank you, Lord, for taking glory. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. We thank God, people of God, for bringing us again. You know, this topic is is a very, very. It's one of those topics that shook people in the heart. <laughs> you know, when we say shook people in the heart, like that saw they are trying to cover up. And then somebody opens it with force and then put pain again. Somewhere that is paining people and you are covering, like, let me try and let this thing heal a little. A sore that is big and painful. And somebody comes and puts pain. Not even pain. Should be pain, pain is small sometimes. Like something big and just dip it inside the wound again and blood comes out. The pain comes out. Like, you know. So this topic is one of those type of topics. But it's the word of God. We have to preach it. Even me. When God gave me this topic, I was just like, God, have mercy. God, help me. God, fill me. God, teach me. I was just I was just <laughs> praying so much. And uh, it's one of those top podcasts I was doing some time ago. That God lets me know that he wants me to speak on this Romans chapter 1. So we are, we have a lot of topics that God has given us from it. This one we are doing now, the second one after this one, and some other more. I've shared the topics among the podcasts, the 14 podcasts that we have. So God has a lot to speak to us from this chapter. 
So one of the topics, or let me say the very first topic that we are, we are bringing out from this passage is Romans chapter 1 verse 28. And God gave them over to a reprobate mind. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Let's read that 28. Let's read the whole 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. You know, I was telling you that this topic is like a particular soil you are trying to cover up and then somebody comes and pull it and then not just pulling it with force. That one is painful on its own, but this person also shook it with something that is painful. So this message is going to reveal to us the reasons why a lot of things are happening. You know, that is that is what I said in one of the postcards, maybe the last one we did. I said this, this postcard, there are spiritual things that God wants us to know. You know, nowadays people are more of physical, more of what is happening around things to satisfy the body while the soul is suffering. But podcasts like this, or let me say a channel like this, or a ministry like this, is really to us those things that people don't talk about or they don't want to talk about. Or all those things that literally you can't know. You understand? Literally nothing will let you know about it. Except the word of God. Except listening to people that are closer to God and God is speaking to them. You understand? So this is one of it. God gave them over to reprobate men because they will not want to retain God in their knowledge. What does that mean? Let's just explain so that we at least know what we are saying. We will not just be going straight to everything. What does it mean? Hmm. It's very deep. It means that there is a part in our heart. There is a part in our life. There's a part in our soul. We did soul, soul ties, sex soul ties, and we define soul. There's a part in our soul that wants God. This Bible chapter, it started with people that saw all the signs that reveals that there is God. They see how day and light come up and, you know, at a time is morning. At another time, it's night. They see all these things. They see the firmament. They see the stars. They see the sun, the moon. The land. The land has been from ages and it's still standing. They see mountains. They see sea. Look at the power that the sea moves with. Maybe sea, maybe ocean. They see all these things. And yet they still say there is no God. You know, they, they were so foolish. That's one of the topics like that. Like how how foolish to see there is no God. But I don't know. Is it foolish I, I used? But this one of the topic. It's also from this chapter. You know, they see all these things and then they now say there is no God. Then this chapter now says, as they will not want to retain God in their knowledge. What is this saying? It's saying that a time will come when you keep denying the things of God. Let me let me use a very practical example that I know it will happen. So we will listen to some of these messages I'm sharing. Let's talk about the one where we talked about how to really be born again. The one we talked about, he that is born of God. Some people will listen to it and be like, it's lie. It's not true. You understand? So the Bible passage is saying, because you will not want to retain God in your knowledge. We said, the Bible says, he that is born of God does not commit sin. But you say, it's like, my pastor is born of God and then he's still commit sin. You know, those things that are contrarily, we still do what God wants us to know about Antichrist. The Antichrist is very, is very subtle. You understand? It's already happening. Antichrist is already in the world. The Bible even said it. He said, 
o won ese tin sise nu but it cannot manifest it cannot fully manifest the the fruit of sin i don't know what bible pass um is that thing that they use in english but in yoruba it's o won ese tin sise nu that is the thing that is causing sin is already happening but it can't fully manifest unless the spirit of god is taken away you understand so what am i saying there is that if you get to a time when you keep ignoring everything that they are saying about god you are saying the opposite you are accepting the opposite the lord will give you over to reprobate mind you start doing those things that are not convenient see on this channel now let me be using channel or maybe page or podcast we have learned that when you are going through something maybe it's for money and stuff like that and it's getting difficult wait on the lord the lord will do it eventually we have learned all that then somebody will not be a lie just like one man that i was talking to some time ago he said a lie you have to find money any how it is you understand But it's the same man that is telling me that I cannot even sleep at night. That a lot of things are just troubling his mind. That he gets scared in the night. But yet, you want to find money by all means. When the word of God says, "Wait on the Lord," after you have suffered for a while, the Lord will establish you. He's going to bless you. He's going to keep you. The promise of God is there. We have also done that podcast. But then you are saying a lie. You went ahead to look for money in any way. Then you lose your sleep, you lose your conscience, you lose your mind. You start misbehaving, you start doing anyhow. You understand? So what is he trying to tell us? God will give that person over to reprobate mind because you don't want to retain God in your knowledge. You don't want to accept what God is saying. You feel, oh, they are just, they are just being on my neck. The things you will start doing. Are the things that will be very difficult. That is what the devil does. The devil is a hard taskmaster. He pushes people to sin against God, and then he has punishment to it. He suffers people. He starts. He starts troubling your life. He starts making life difficult for you. That is what the devil does. The devil makes life difficult for people who listen to him more than listening to God. The devil will never say that he's the one that forced you, even though he's the one that uh, told you to do it. But he will not say that he forced you. He only say that he only suggested to you, and then you accepted. You understand? So the Bible is telling us today that when you choose not to retain God in your knowledge, the Lord will, by Himself, just give you over to reprobate mind. You start doing those things that are not convenient. Those things that are. Terrible. Those things that are dangerous for your health, because that's what the devil does. He will be making you to do things contrarily to God. They say serve God. When you serve God, all you have to do is just pray. You say no, la la. You cannot serve God. You want to serve devil, and this is devil. We say sacrifice human being for his for his sacrifice. Which one is more convenient? But the devil will not let you know. Or let me say, the Lord will just give you over to reprobate mind. You start doing those things that are not convenient because you refuse to accept the knowledge of God in your knowledge. Look at Pharaoh. When God said, "Let my people go," he said, "No, I don't know this God, and I will not let them go." He refused. He kept on saying no. At the time, God told Moses, "He said, I will glorify myself over this man, over Pharaoh. All the earth will know that I am God, over Pharaoh." It's even God said that God said that we are doing that. He will not let them go so that it can be destroyed. That's what happens when you have refused to retain God in your knowledge. Look at a lot of boys that are smoking today. When you ask them, they say there are a lot of things in their mind that they cannot uh, do with their physical eyes. That's why they have to go and be smoking. But if you retain God in your knowledge, they say don't don't do these bad things. You don't do it. There will not be anything on your mind that will be troubling you that much to the extent that you want to you want to be using smoke to to kill. I'm telling you, it won't be too difficult for you to handle that. You will need something that will be dangerous to your body. Don't you know those toxins you are smoking that dangerous to your health? You understand? They are the the the, the set of people that were forced 
having COVID nineteen were those people that were smokers already and and these things have already damaged their inner organs. You understand? They were the ones that were mostly captured by coronavirus. You understand? So what am I trying to say there is that those things that will be dangerous to you, those things that will mean evil to your health, to your life, they are the things that you will be doing because you refuse to retain God in your knowledge. Let's take another example now. They said, don't be sleeping around. Then you start sleeping around. Depression will set in. You can no longer stay in one place without sleeping with a particular woman. Or the day you will sleep with the one that will take all your destiny, everything you have you have captured, that will take everything away. You know, I watched a video some time ago. The guy came back from, I think, London. Maybe maybe UK, but he had red passport, so I know that it is. It is UK passport. You understand? He had it in his hand, and immediately he got to the country. Instead of him to go to his family, he went and carried Olosho. He went to a hotel. He went and carried all these girls that that sleep with men for money. And the following morning, the girls stole her passport, stole his passport, stole um maybe chain or so, some golden things, and some expensive things around him. You understand? And he was trying to do video of this girl that she, she stole his thing, his things. And I'm like, this man is very stupid. This man doesn't have sense. Because if you have sense, you, he collected everything from that girl and he still collected the money he was supposed to give that girl. He still collected it from her. And I'm like, this man is caused already. Because this girl did work for what she collected. And you still collected that money from him. The man is caused already. His friends were encouraging him to collect the money from her. And I was just looking at them that it's only God that will allow you to, that will allow him to go back to that country that he came from. Even if he goes back there, they might deport him. Anything can happen. The password can even still lost because he really disgraced that girl. And you see, you see, this is how men behave. They will be doing something very wrong, but they want to push all the blames on women. And this is one thing that is really scary about men to me. Before, I used to, like, argue with them, like, don't do things like this. But now I don't argue. I don't know how to argue. Because when you're arguing, they make you feel like you are, you are an evil person. You hate men. So I just stay away. This is my space that there is no demonic energy that is there now. I, it's so pure. You understand? You and you will be you, okay by the time this girl came to your house, or by the time she was on the road, was she it was the other that forced herself on you? It was by your mouth, by your leg, you carried her. And now you are disgracing her, you are, you are making her to feel like she has done the worst thing on it. You that is supposed to go to your house, are you seeing the inconvenient thing that devil makes people to do? He cannot even control himself. And he doesn't look like a small boy that is just sleeping around. Even if he's a small boy, a small boy is not supposed to be sleeping around. He looks like somebody who is married already. Who knows what he's going through that is troubling his heart, troubling his mind so much that he cannot sleep alone unless he sleeps with Olosho, unless he sleeps with a particular girl in a day. Maybe he's, he's, you understand. So many covenants that they are making unknowingly, unwillingly. Let me say unwillingly. They don't want to make it, but they are making it already. You slept with a girl last night. She gave you all the sex styles that she knows because that was all the girl was saying. And then the following morning, you are treating this girl like trash. The man is trash himself. It means he, 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 he doesn't have respect for his body. But then you want this girl to take all the blames. You see? You see what the devil does? He, he lets you lose. You have done one of those topics like that. That there is no sex that is free. You are losing something. You are losing. And especially if it is um, uh, a sinful kind of sex, you are losing virtues. You are losing goodness. You are losing your destiny. You are losing a lot of things that God has deposited in you. You understand? So what am I trying to say? He refused to retain God in his knowledge that only have one woman. Don't be sleeping around. Then he started doing things that are not convenient. Do you see it? Even though he tried to justify himself that he was right, that it was the girl that is wrong for stealing his things. 
But do you know what has even been stolen in the spiritual? A girl who sleeps with different men, do you think she will be an ordinary girl anymore? Do you know how many spirits that she has acquired into her body and soul? Because we talk about sexual ties. Do you know how many souls are living in her now? But you, you want to show yourself that you are perfect, you are good. But then you can sleep with a woman that has slept with several men. You are the one that is most insensible of all. You don't have sense. Because you don't retain God in your knowledge, those things that you'll be doing will just be be nonsense. They say don't drink. Now you drink. You sleep in the gutter. You sleep in the toilet. You have hangover. What do they call it? You understand? Like you don't know where your body is. You just start misbehaving anyhow. They even say some girls, when they sleep around like, when they, when they are drunk like that, some people can sleep with them. Because they don't understand where their body is at that particular time. You understand? Is it convenient that somebody that you don't know from anywhere has slept with you? Is it a good thing to do those things that are not convenient? That is shown to Koto. Those things that are not convenient. Those things that are difficult. But that is the burden the devil puts on, on people that refuse to accept God into their life. That refuse to listen to the knowledge of God. That's, that's intentionally just Refuse the knowledge of God in their mind. That is what the devil does to them. He gives them over to reprobate mind. They start doing things that are not convenient. Those things that are not good. Those things that, that, that are stressful. You know, there are some things that are actually stressful. When you do these things, your body will tell you that this thing you have done is stressful. It's not like when they say, come and lift a whole house. You know, it's stressful. It's... But those are the burdens the devil puts on people. And that is the burden that Jesus Christ removes at salvation. That's what the bodies are lifted as Calvary. Calvary, Calvary. Jesus is very near. Those are the burdens. The devil puts burden on you. You start finding yourself in places that are not convenient, places that are that are not right. You start finding yourself doing things that are not right. Things that are not convenient. Is it convenient when you are sleeping inside gutter? Is it convenient when you are sleeping inside toilet? Is it convenient when the man that you don't know is sleeping with you? Because you are drunk? It's not convenient now. Or is it convenient when your body is getting damaged? Because of too much smoking, too much drinking? It's not convenient, but it's because you refuse to retain God in your knowledge. Those are the punishments for those things. So what is what is God trying to let us know? He's trying to let us know that retain God in your knowledge. I said God, the Bible already told us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So if you want... God to assist you to do those things that are convenient. Jesus said, come unto me, all you that labor. He said, my load is easy and my burden is light. You understand? If you want the burden of Jesus, some people will think, oh, going to church every day is so, is so stressful. Praying every day is so stressful. But those things that the devil makes you to do, they are more stressful. Are you seeing it? That is what Jesus Christ was saying when he said, my burden is light. All you have to do is just to kneel down and pray. All you have to do is, is just to pass through the situation for a while and then you enter into your glory without without um, without sorrow. Because God gives you blessings without adding sorrow to it. But then you say, God's, God's method is not, is not good. Or maybe it's too slow. You go to the way of the devil. For example, some examples of people that do rituals. God say, wait for me, I will bless you. They say, no, lie, lie. They will now go and look for money from the devil. Then the devil puts hard labor on them. Look at that man that that is ritual something is to be sleeping inside coffin every night. He cannot sleep on his bed. He has the money, he has everything, but he cannot sleep on his bed. He has to sleep inside coffin because of money. Is it convenient? People that are still sleeping on the bed say they are still complain that God, my body is paining me. Not to now talk of coffin. He dies every night. That is the meaning. There is money, but there is no peace. The devil has taken the peace. It's, in, it's not convenient. 
You understand? The, the Lord says, wait on me. I will give you money at the right time. You say, no, you cannot wait on the Lord, though. You, you will go and steal somebody's money. Because I call it stealing. Or maybe use, uh, um, what do they call it? Stealing, uh, dubious means. You know, lying to somebody, deceiving somebody. Like some people do. They will tell the person, ah, you are my wife, you are my lover. But it's just because you want to collect money from that person. Then, you, because you are lying too much, you start needing to... You start needing smoking to cure yourself of all those uh, stress of smoking, of, of, of duping somebody of the added money. You know, you lie to people, bring this money, it will become millions. And it's lie. It's not going to become millions. You just want to collect that money and, and spend it. You know? Then you, 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 you get yourself worked up every time. You are thinking, I don't know, maybe it's your conscience that is now pricking you. You now start thinking of, of so many things and and then you go into smoking Indian M. And this Indian M, they are very expensive. But because you don't want to retain God in your knowledge, you start doing those kind of things. Smoking that and that is not good for your health. You smoke every morning, every morning afternoon. I went to a, a particular guy. So like he smokes, he smokes. Within, he doesn't have break. Even if he wants to have break, maybe like two minutes break, he's smoking again. If he's not smoking, he's drinking very odd drinks. These are the things that happen. Is it convenient? And here, here you are. You you don't dupe somebody of the other money. And you don't smoke all these things. Your energy is pure. People can get close to you and get healed of their, of, of their troubled soul. But those other people, the devil has put them in bondage. And is punishing them, beating them day and night. But Jesus Christ is here. Don't come to me. But you, you'll be looking at it like it's too dull. It's too... But the one that the devil is making you to do is is terrible. Those things that the devil is asking you to do, they are the things that are not convenient at all. Those things that are dangerous for your health, dangerous for your life, they are the things that the devil is, is asking you to do. But you prefer that one. You'll be going into them. You'll be doing them. Today God is inviting us. He's inviting us. Carry my body. If it's just to be praying, look at me. There was a time my life was, I can say, depressed. But not really depressed. I can't really call it depressed like that. You know, there are different stages of depression. But that time I was not doing anything all day. You understand? I was searching for a job. Like, I should just have a job. I just have a job. And I prayed. I prayed through. That is what we mean by praying through. When you pray to the point that God finally speaks. And I prayed through and God said, go and be doing prayers online. You understand? If it's some people be like, no, ha, if I'm doing prayers online, where will I see money? Of course I thought about that too. But with the prayers, I started seeing differences in my life. I started seeing progress. That is the, that is the burden of Jesus. He's very light. He's not going to put you in any bondage. But the devil, we put you in bondage. We put you in hard labor. Maybe there's somebody, not me, or maybe there's somebody. You'll be like, just to be praying, ah, I cannot do it all. You say, this money, we must have it by all means. At that time, I didn't have a good house. I didn't have money to eat. I couldn't feed myself. I couldn't rent an apartment. I couldn't do anything. And in fact, I have a lot of things I needed money to do, big projects I need money to do. But God sees the future. You don't know that it is possible you acquire all these things. And then, in a day, you have to leave them. You are still living in this world, though. You know that when somebody dies, the person must leave these things by force. But there are times you have to leave these things. Look at what happened in Ukraine. That a lot of people left their things in Ukraine. So stuff like that happen. If many of those things were acquired through sinful means, and you now left them, did you lose or, or gain? You, lose, you lost everything. You understand? Some people's landlord, they threw their things away. There were some people that said that you helped them to... To send their things, but by the time they have the landlord, the landlord already threw them away. You understand? So what am I trying to say there is that the burden of Jesus is light. 
But the time you are saying by force, by force, you want to get this money by all means, by all means. You want to ball like your friends. You want to... You will, you will enter into something that is not convenient. Something that will start pursuing you. Those people that... The spirit of those that they killed to have money. That is pursuing them. It's not convenient. So that's what God is teaching us today. Let's come to God. Let's carry the burden of Jesus. It might look insensible, but it's blessing. It's peaceful. It's life. We God help us. Let us pray. Father, Lord, we thank you for the word of God that has gone out today. You have encouraged us to accept your burden, which is light and is convenient, and to say no to the burden of the devil. Please come and help us. My God and my Father, we cannot do it on our own, even if we try to. Only the Spirit of God, only the grace of God, only the power of God can help us. Please help us. Thank you, Lord, for answer prayers. Please fill me up with the Holy Spirit. Renew my strength. Give me power. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you. God bless you.